Uh, it's my privilege to introduce uh, Dr. Sarvanan. Uh, Sarvanan, sir, as, does not need any introduction, but uh, since it's been given as a former FT basis, I'm just telling him, a vast experienced surgeon. And he did um, his uh, major education from Arvind, and he has visited uh, you know, n number of uh, places outside as an observer, as a student. But now he's, uh, he has years of uh, teaching. He will be enlightening us on uh, the ergonomics of uh, VR surgery, how to go about what are the do's and don'ts uh, when doing a VR surgeon for all of us. Thank you, sir. Um, over to you, Sarunan, sir, please. Thank you, Rajesh. Thank you for the kind invitation. And uh, can you see my uh, slides now? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, we can sir, see, yes, sir, yes, full sir. screen, sir. Full screen. Yeah. yeah. So this uh, part of this has already been covered by Pradeep, so I'll just skip these uh, uh, preliminary slides. So before in the OR, before we talk about the surgeon's positioning, I'd like to add a point on uh, patient positioning as well, because uh, lying down uh, in a long surgery in a supine position is not always comfortable for elderly patient. So we, in cases, people who are a little bit frail and not very uh, comfortable, better to support their knees and their neck with a roll tile or some kind of uh, props to make them comfortable for their long surgery. And also uh, to get a proper view, uh, what we call it as par focusing, uh, the uh, the uh, uh, bottom part of the microscope that that and the eye plane should be equal equally horizontal to each other. This will give you a distortion free uh, view of all the peripheries. So uh, you see that the uh, uh, all parts of the limbus, the three, nine, six, and twelve, are more or less horizontal to the uh, microscope uh, viewing angle, so that you get a, a nice and distortion-free uh, view throughout the surgery. So achieve this uh, before you start cleaning and draping, because uh, make sure that you get all give all the neck props and everything to make the patient comfortable in this particular portion, so that you need not make adjustments for the patient's mal portion. So we'll go through some of the steps which we routinely follow in, uh, in our uh, OR. So normally, uh, some of the cataract surgeon scopes we see that they don't have any uh, armrest uh, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the area where the patient's head rests. But for us, because we are doing long surgeries, having this uh, wrist wrist rest rather. Uh, helps gives you to uh, have a, a good support for a strain-free sur long surgeries. And also the patient's position uh, is usually rather than keeping exactly uh, straight, it's better to keep slightly tilted so that the operating eye becomes a little bit exo. It gives you much easier access to the temporal periphery because the nose can sometimes obstruct, especially in a sunken globe or a long nose. It's better to uh, keep the uh, eye operating eye slightly exo by turning the patient's face towards the opposite sides. So make sure that you do all the uh, proper adjustments which you are going to describe before you start your surgery so that uh, it's easier throughout rather than making after sitting and starting then making the adjustments. So when you see here, uh, the all the three axes of the main uh, components, that's the patient's face, the microscope oculus and the uh, patient, uh, surgeon's sitting portion, everything is more or less in a straight line and uh, the orientation is perpendicular to this uh, single axis. Otherwise, they're going to have a lot of discomfort, especially when you're doing multiple cases sitting in that scope. So here you can see that the patient's, uh, the surgeon's face is straight, but the body is slightly turned to the left. Here you can see it's turned to the right. So this will be the more neutral portion and more comfortable and strain-free portion. So make sure that you do this before you start your surgery. The uh, example of how the table should be at the table and the surgeon should be set up before you start your surgery. And as regards to the seat height, uh, correct height should be approximately where your thigh and the uh, leg is more or less at 90 degrees angle. This gives you the most comfortable position. If it is too low, you are having a unsupported uh, lower thigh and also your legs are cramped and gives you a little bit difficulty in uh, mobilizing your uh, foot pedal on the left and right. And if it's too high, then it's going to cause a lot of strain on the lower thigh. And you can also have to a little bit lean forwards and that will create a lot of stress on the back muscles also. So make sure that your height is uh, such that the leg and the thigh is more or less uh, perpendicular to each other. This will give you the uh, correct height. So you can show the example of a low height where the uh, lower part of the thigh is unsupported and the knee is uh, angled up, gives you a lot of cramping and also uh, undue stress on your lower back. This is a little bit increased where you have to reach for your uh, this thing and also you may have to lean forwards when this is the case and this is an example of a correct height where it is more or less uh, perpendicular to the uh, thighs and the leg is more or less uh, 90 degrees to each other and as regards the foot pedal portion again this is a lot of times missed because uh, we change foot pedals for laser and all those things so make sure that it is uh, reachable and comfortable if it is too far off you'll have to stretch your legs out 
again it's going to cause a lot of stress on your back if it is too close then it's going to again cramp your uh, uh, style and you'll have a lot of uh, stress at your ankle which can cause uh, pain in long surgeries so that also you have to and sometimes you have in in inadvertent pressing of the pedal without your knowledge because you are keeping your toe always elevated so that is one thing so keep sure that make sure that your pedal also has the right position compared to your chair and sitting position so this is example of uh, where the pedal is too forwards and this is where it's too backwards causing you can see the is lifting the toe up to com- compensate for the closeness and this is going to cause a lot of strain on the ankle and the toes and this is more or less the correct position where it is more comfortable and more or less neutral So when you have a, sometimes you have these uh, different companies making foot pedals which can be a little bit higher and lower so if you have a one pedal which is lower it's better to keep some sort of additional platform underneath so that it comes to the same height as the uh, a higher pedal so this this gives you a much more neutral position rather than working with the dissimilar pedals make sure that you have some sort of prop underneath to make it more or less equal in height on both the sides of your legs and as regards your uh, uh, back and neck when the table should be uh, uh, Close as uh, close as to possible. When you have too far, you have to lean forwards, which again, which keeps a lot of stress on your uh, back and neck. So make sure that your t- table is such that you have a sort of uh, a straight back position, uh, like uh, again, which uh, Pradeep was showing in his uh, slit lamp examination and indirect ophthalmoscopy. So that uh, it is again, it's much more. Here you can see example of where the surgeon is leaning forwards because the table is quite away from him, and this is uh, more or less okay. so again the table when it's very high or when the chair is more low it's more of a comparison so if it is too high your elbows are bent and it causes a lot of pressure on your uh, ulnar nerves which can sometimes produce some sort of tingling sensation if you are too much bent and again it's uh, if it is too low uh, your arms are hanging down and your movements also become a little bit cramped so make sure that you are at a sort of a neutral elbow position where you don't have to uh, too uh, low or too high again which gives you a lot of comfort of the shoulders as well um and also the elbow rest also is very uh, uh, should be properly arranged so when you have a high table your elbow does not rest on the arm rest again causing a lot of strain and this is a low table where you can see the hands are cramped when you are trying to mobilize and this should be the more or less the uh, correct position for your uh, surgery and the microscope uh, like you see here uh, normally when you see catastrophes operating you see that the uh, angulation of the microscope is more oriented towards his feet 6 o'clock position so this uh, i don't know why they do that but for us it is best to keep it as more or less perpendicular this will, in these cases you will you see that they are elevating the chin of the patient to accommodate for this tilt but uh, for us we have uh, scopes which are uh, having this uh, uh, mobile oculars apart from the main stem so you can see that it you keep, try to keep it as as perpendicular as possible so that gives some um, easy focusing of the 12 o'clock position also and the uh, orientation of the uh, ocular should be more or less uh, uh, parallel to the ground or horizontal to the ground so that you have a more or less straight gaze so this is a mal aligned scope which you see what normally cataracts is doing with this so you see that here it's more perpendicular which to uh, mobilize uh, easier visibility of the 12 o'clock position which is not possible when the uh, scope is angled towards 6 o'clock some of the scopes have this markers to make sure that you are in the correct aligned uh, position before you start your surgery and this is uh, how uh, where is, uh, yeah, the ocular should be more or less perpendicular this is looking down and can cause uh and uh, unnecessary strain on your neck this is looking up again again you have strain on your neck this is a sort of a neutral position where you're looking straight with the head, more or less straightly held uh, neck and head this is an example of a mal aligned uh, oculars you can see he is having sort of a goose neck because of he is looking trying to look up because of the tilt uh, downward tilt of the oculars and here it's uh, upward tilt and you can see that it's going, what you call a swan neck uh, deformity you can get that and this is more or less the where the Uh, orientation is correct with the horizontal looking uh, head and neck so so this is how to sit you can see that elbows propped well the back is more or less straight the ocular are looking straight and the pedal and the seat height and the knee position everything is more or less correct as regards the shoulders uh when your arm rest uh, or the elbow rest of your chair is not at the correct thing it can cause a lot of stress so when it is too low you have a drooping shoulders which can cause uh, strain and when it is too high it will cramp your uh, mobility of your hands again causing a little bit difficulty in surgery especially if you are working towards the anterior retina or the anterior segment so make sure that your elbow rest is uh, more or less at the correct height to give a neutral shoulder position and more comfortable with less stress uh, either either in less uh, more stress or uh, more cramping so it should be more or less neutral to get this so is example of a shrugging position because of the high uh, elbow rest or a drooping because of a low elbow rest 
and this is more as the correct or neutral uh, shoulder position and with the correct adjustment of the elbow rest height so again examples of how uh, shrugging shoulders and drooping shoulders on the side uh, angle to make uh, to make you realize what are the dif uh, difficulties when you have such position of the elbow so as regards to your uh, arm uh, choosing the gloves also is very important because when during long surgeries you can get severe stress in the uh, wrists and in the palms especially so there are a lot of studies to show that uh, Uh, if you have a, a, a tighter, it gives you a lot of uh, uh, pain during the end of the surgery. If it is too loose or large, it gives you less tactile feedback. So the correct will be the uh, if you have to go for a correct fitting so that you have uh, uh, less uh, uh, contractural force at your uh, palms, so it will cause a lot of pain. So make sure that you have the correct glove. Don't go for either a small or a too large. Choose the correct glove both for uh, comfort as well as uh, best tactile feedback. So and one more thing which you see is uh, uh, beginning surgeons they try to hold their breath when they are operating especially on critical critical locations like the ILM or the um, ERM peeling and this can sometimes cause a lot of stress on your whole body so never try to hold your uh, breath uh, uh, when you are operating on uh, critical locations um, so this is what can happen you are putting too much uh, stress the, when you are holding your breath your whole body becomes uh, tense and stiff so don't do that like uh, the how the teacher teaches in the kung fu panda movie uh, breathing uh, on and off slowly and uh, smoothly is very critical to reach for your inner strength and uh, maintain uh, peace this is an example of uh, what we uh, should be doing uh, during our retina surgeries especially when you are working in normally it happens because you are when you are uh, trying to concentrate and you are especially in a tense when you are operating on critical locations you inadvertently without realizing hold your breath which can push put uh, too much stress Uh, throughout your whole body, not only your, not not uh, adding to your mind as well. And the last, this uh, slider, what they, my colleagues wanted to put this. Uh, so the for surgeons' well-being, not only working in the uh, 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 hospital, you have to chill out outside it also, so that you get in a free of mind, and that helps to uh, uh, loosen up your body also. So uh, tensed or uh, anxious or depressed patient can have a lot of. Uh, Uh, difficulties and disabilities happening because of that. So not only inside the OR, but uh, making sure that uh, we chill out afterwards also the critical part of the VR surgeon's well-being. I think I'll stop here. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, wonderful illustrations. I think everybody agrees. Uh, Natarajan sir has already put it in uh, description that uh, wonderful uh, illustrations that you have marked out. Uh, Sarvan sir is known for it and for his, uh, you know. Um, in terms of cartoons being uh, enlightening as also thank you sir thank you very much so any other chilo, comments as such in the chilo image he looks chilo image he looks, chilo, chilo, he looks the fittest <laughs> so and i, I think uh, sir an excellent illustration i think a lot of lessons to learn from uh, kung fu panda i think it's very good for a vr surgeon for anybody actually and i keep giving motivational talk to all the college students using the kung fu panda there are 11 lessons they have, they are mentioned in the net So I think it's a great thing for the VR surgeon. I mean, it's not only physical; you have to have physical, mental, everything, fitness for doing the surgery. So I actually bring the patient's head little forward, so I almost the patient's head is like I sit back like this and operate with the the head on the the head of the patient is on the lap, so that I don't have to do this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wonderful presentation, sir, uh, including the gloves you have covered with it. Thank you. Just bit, sir. Yeah. uh what dr sarvanan showed was the chair and table adjustment in chair adjustment it's very useful to have a very ergonomic chair which is which has micro adjustments which can be controlled by the foot of the surgeon where you can you know re really put your back arms and everything at ease these chairs come with a preloaded small battery which is rechargeable and lasts the whole day as for your operating time there is a price to them but they really make the task the micro adjustment really uh, give you the peace of mind and relaxation to your back and neck because you're re really able to reach the optimum height and uh, where you you are totally relaxed for sure thank you thank you thank you sir can i can i ask a question to sarvanan yes sir murli the sir sir yeah yeah Uh, uh, I, I wanted, wanted to ask, ask Sarvadan uh, 
what do you do when what you do you do when you have to wear two gloves now i my now i my size is 7 and a half normally so i wear 7 and a half and 7 and a half again over that because that we need to do open whenever we are operating on it better is to go for a gloves to be slightly larger than the first gloves that will give you more comfort then no i actually using from 91 when i started doing hiv patients i wear eight gloves and then over there seven and a half tighter and i think it's okay and i also developed the tactile sensation with the two gloves and as saranam said you have to be comfortable so i am very comfortable having the the uh, what do you call the the drape uh, the, the dress still here and then it's covered totally and i mean you have to have flexibility and and i think no stress on the hands I always wear double glove, so that if there's one, one problem in the other one, and and I've developed uh, uh, the doing everything with that. And another thing is, I think Alcon has done, or any other company, no financial interest. All instruments should be weight light weighted, like the five grams or less. Any instrument, and every instrument hold it like a pen, so that you don't have the the risk. Uh, so that's why exercise is important. I mean, to tone your muscles. Mr. Muna wants to make a comment. yeah uh, sarvanan that was a brilliant talk and uh, especially the despicable me uh, scene i remember it so well yeah i think more than holding the breath uh, all of us unconsciously tighten our neck muscles when we are doing step not only a junior surgeon i think it happens to all of us at some time and that's something we need to consciously look for and uh, also uh, people who are little large and bulky and obese when they try to put their legs under the table sometimes that ties it causes a problem so i think that also is something that needs to be your cartoons and all your models were very average size so <laughs> they look very fit <laughs> i was just thinking of that because you know it's the build of the person also that sometimes we need to take into account but uh, thoroughly enjoyed your talk thank you so much thank you to mutli just one second yeah i i just wanted to make a comment that most of us are having fellows and uh, sitting on the side you know when you're sitting on the side also you're sitting on the side there is a echo from you when you're sitting on the side also you have to adjust your log in to two accounts that side happening so i think you're logged into two accounts sir there is echo when you speak to mutli we cannot we're not able to defend your uh, okay Oh, sorry. I I think uh, I had locked in two devices. Ah, uh, no. When uh, many of us are having fellows, and when fellows operate, we are sitting on the assistant's course aside and then observing and guiding them. And that time also, it's important to maintain uh, at least your neck and you know shoulder position properly. And then when you change and take over the surgery after the initial part, normally what happens is we take over some critical steps, and therefore we might not you know kind of adjust the oculars. back to the height of our height so when you are changing over always make sure that you adjust the microscope properly you know whether you are on the assistant side or on the surgeon side you know you make sure that uh, you uh, adjust the uh, height and this one has the sternum as so elegantly uh, given his lecture uh, so it's important you know when you are switching over also please uh, make sure that you do these adjustments and also teach your fellows right in the beginning how many many times fellows are a little reluctant to you know ask the ot people to do the adjustments because they feel a little intimidated by our presence so make sure that the fellows also are taught the proper ergonomics and the position of the head even when they are assisting because they have to be sitting in the assistant position for such a long time and uh, they also should follow this and make sure that they follow this uh, in your day to day ot you know that's something i wanted to just uh, highlight Doctor, I'm sure you want to say something. Yeah, no, two things I forgot. One is I also made the uh, our surgeon's chair a scooter chair. That means it it becomes like that so that the sciatic as a sciatic nerves are not pressed. But the other one mentioned uh, Sarana mentioned about the breathing. One more thing, I think there is publication on people don't blink while doing the ILM, uh, feeling they're continuously staring, and that also adds to your actually stress. So the breathing plus the blinking, I think you have to learn to relax totally. So I have. music both for the patient and now i change to chanting for both for the patient and me very rarely some patient will object but 99.99% i think the music helps you to relax 
Mahesh, one thing I wanted to stress again is the relaxation in between cases or during cases, just stressing what Dr. Saril mentioned on the prolonged procedures, uh, just stretching your neck off, the, you know, moving it and then rotating the head and all that helps. Even lifting your hand, if possible, or stretching your hand does help in a way because invariably while you're doing certain procedures, you can't uh, relax when you're uh, as Saronin pointed out. If we could relax during ER and peeling or something like that, it, it, it doesn't happen so often. So you really are focused and concentrating, straining your muscles, doing things. So it will definitely help a lot is to stretch your muscles whenever possible, especially in between cases, doing exercise like bending down or sitting, squatting or you know getting up. All that helps a lot in relaxing your overall muscles. The Dr. Dam, uh, you know, he used to do buckles continuously. And then between every case, he used to do these exercises. Even today, at the age of 85, he's able to, I mean, he, he can easily perform any of these procedures. So that, that's a real lesson to maintain, uh, uh, you know, your back and the rest of the muscles uh, properly, especially during these long procedures. I think uh, Sweta and Dr. Sarin will cover part of it during their lectures as well. I think so. Mahesh, only one more point is the uh, other thing I learned, uh, particularly Dr. Charles Kippen, when he visited my OT in 93, one is he said the surgeon should have a flat abdomen, that means strong abdomen. And he told me this bed is, will be painful for a patient. And he lied on the patient's table and told me, How can I lie down for long? You're operating for maybe under. I told him that time it was all GA. He says, Patient, no, but you don't know. Have you ever gone to the post-operative ward and asked how much is your body pain because you're lying down under GA also? So I think that time I realized I put such a big cushion for the patient, separate headrest and separate uh, for so that when you sit, there's a, some cushion effect like a sofa and it's firm, like an orthopedic bed. Thank you, sir. I think uh, we have had wonderful discussions on this uh, first session. Dr. Charlie, do you want to add anything? Because I totally agree with all those. There's a lot of uh, learning <laughs> coming in. Thank you. And I just want one point. Uh, looking at what sir started with having the patient's uh, position as the first, even uh, you keep advising us always to look at the patient's position first. We had a you know, um, heart in our mouth on the other day when the patient was, had uh, renal failure, but he was not willing for uh, dialysis. But he couldn't maintain a proper, you know, a supine position for more than 10 minutes. And it was a diabetic CRD and um, it was a hell of a time that by the time we finished up. So, yes. And second thing is, as uh, he rightly pointed out, one is a patient's. But if the patient's position cannot be, uh, you know, at the optimal because of whatever reason, so we have to have a uh, back and neck strength strengthen so that we can cope up with that surgical intervention.